Hello, Saints. This is Brother Joshua Carlos Heim Vitale calling on my YouTube audience, my Periscope audience, and whatever else audience I'm re receiving from the internet. I'd like to call this teaching Crucifying Your Appetites Before They Crucify You. Yep, you heard it right. Crucify your appetite before your appetite crucifies you. Many times we have more than one appetite. But what is it that you so crave, that you so hunger for, that it takes a hold of you and you can't get free from it? Well... On this little journey that we're taking, let us pray to receive wisdom from the Holy Spirit, from God the Holy Spirit. Because He's the only one that can reveal our weaknesses to us in such a way that it doesn't offend us. He's the Master. He's the Holy Spirit. He is the Lord of all. Amen. And um, I think that many times we err because we think that the voice that says, hey, you're being too hard on yourself, is uh, a lack of condemnation. And we're right, it's a lack of condemnation. But more importantly, it's a compassion that we're not able to allow ourselves to receive because we feel so bad about ourselves because, oh, well, look what I did and I just, oh, I'm such a low little doggy dog and I should have never done what I did and I did what I did. I don't deserve your mercy. I don't deserve your grace. We get into this woe is me category of uh, emotions and, and we we automatically assume that, you know, chastisement is coming and and it's gonna be it's gonna be rough. But we're not God. And God doesn't chastise us like even our fathers or mothers or aunts and uncles or nieces and nephews or whoever our society chastises us. God is more merciful. Whereas they do it to their pleasure, he does it for our benefit. If it's not gonna benefit us, God's not going to chastise us in that fashion or that form. He's not an unmerciful God, saints. He's not in heaven with a bat waiting to watch us script and then go, mm -hmm, you know, hit us over the head with a bat. God doesn't do that. That's not his style. But one thing he does say is we have to, as a grain of wheat, fall into the ground and die to ourself. If we don't fall into the ground as a grain of wheat and die, we abide alone. So therein is what we need to do. We need to learn how to die to ourself, to our passions, to our appetites. It's really a question of how are we going to do it? How are we going to die to our appetites of lust, of greed, of ego, of anger, malice, ill will, intentional... Well, there's so many numerous fruits that come from the tree of knowledge of good and evil that they're just so numerous, they're just too numerous to mention all of them right now, but... MV, you know, take your pick. Whatever you suffer from, you know. Whatever your affliction is, whatever your 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 dietary uh, appetite is, for and we're not talking about the physical, you know, fruits and vegetables here. <laughs> we're talking about anger and malice and envy and greed and lust and ego. Things that trip us up, saints. Things that so easily beset us about. We should, as 
little rocks or big rocks or big weights or little weights, whatsoever besets us about, lay aside every weight that sets us off course. Consider the great amount of witnesses that we're surrounded by in the Bible, the book of Revelation. The Apostle Peter who wrote two books. He wrote more than that, but only two are included in the Bible. The book of Acts. Paul, the apostle, who wrote almost half of the New Covenant. Praise the Lord. Pray in tongues as much as you can. Pray in tongues as much as you can, saints, because I'll tell you what, when you pray in tongues, you're praying in the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God is praying through you to God the Father and God the Son for you to your benefit. And it edifies you. Because while you may not understand what you're saying, God, the Holy Spirit, knows what he's saying directly to the Father through you, through Jesus, to the Father, directly. And God hears and he understands and he answers prayer, especially when God, the Holy Spirit, is praying through you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So the next time you're feeling a little bit discouraged, just pray. Next time you're feeling tempted, run quick to get down your knees in your bedroom or wherever you may be. Find a place of seclusion and pray. And you don't even have to pray out loud. God hears your voice, even if you pray inwardly to him who abides within. Don't think he doesn't hear you. Oh, he hears you. He hears you loud and clear. So the next time you feel a little bit discouraged, just talk to him like I'm talking to you as a friend. Because he is our friend. He's not only our father. He's our God, our creator, our Lord, our husband. He is the husband man. He is the husband man. And he is Lord of all lords, King of all kings. He, the Father, is the Lord of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, we must take into account all things. And remember, whenever we're feeling tempted, there's a way out. If you can't say anything else but Jesus, then just say Jesus. Jesus, Lord Jesus, help me, Lord Jesus. Save me from this hour. Deliver me from temptation. And, you know, um, those are just a great many words right there, you know. Just a few words are all you need. You don't need to express yourself in a million words to God. Sometimes it just takes an utterance, maybe a groaning in your soul. God understands even the, the faintest cry. But he's waiting for you to cry out to him. So, what are you waiting for? Let us learn how to die to the desires of this flesh by crucifying our appetites of whatsoever it may be that we're fighting with. We're trying to crucify it, but it ends up seemingly always crucifying us every time we fight that temptation, that spirit that comes against us, that stronghold. Let's talk a minute about strongholds. Strongholds are what we fight against. It's not that we're fighting against evil spirits all the time. It's that evil mindset, that stronghold, that that spirit long ago planted, that envy planted, that mindset, that mind hold, that way of thinking long ago in your mind. And now all you can do is fight the mind hold, the stronghold. But the Bible tells us to cast down imaginations in every stronghold and everything that sets itself up in variance against the Word of God and the knowledge of God that God has of us. Whatever God says of us is what should matter. Not what the world says. Not even what you say about yourself. You have to cast all things down that are contrary to the Word of God. And so, when you come against those mindsets, those strongholds, cast them down,
by prayer and fasting. Now, many people think that the only kind of fasting is fasting of food, but you're wrong. You can fast the television. You can fast the radio. You can fast your CD player. You can fast many things. You can fast giving in to anger or lust or greed or ego or pride. Oh, don't go there, Brother Joshua Carl. Pride. Yes, let's go there. Let's crucify that old beast of pride before that old beast of pride crucifies us. So my beloved, until the next time, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May he grant you his peace and his rest when you in, as you abide in his shalom by abiding in his word and letting his word abide in you. Shalom.